Hey everyone, welcome to this really super special Dreamforce 2019 webinar. After the long bunch of Salesforce adoption webinars that we've been doing lately, this year, to be honest, it's a welcome change. And uh, in fact, um, I wouldn't dub this as a regular webinar, uh, but as a conversation about uh, things at Dreamforce that probably all of you are really curious about. So before I jump into the webinar with Eric, uh, let me make this straight. Uh, if you're going to be at Dreamforce, then you'd better rather stay till the end of this webinar as we have some exclusive announcements towards the end. So uh, let's start with the introduction. Um, I'm your host, Gokul Suresh, and I'm the marketing manager at WhatFix and an active Salesforce blogger. And it's my pleasure today to welcome our guest, Eric Freshfield, Vice President Delivery at IT Quality, the Salesforce MVP since 2013, founder of Midwest Dreaming and a hugely popular voice in the Salesforce ecosystem. Eric, welcome to the webinar. Good morning, thanks for having me on. So Eric, um, that's what, about six years of being an MVP? Uh, sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> but it's sounding <laughs> right. Oh yeah, so I mean, truly awesome. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, you could make it for this special webinar and uh, welcome again. And uh, I'm really excited for the info that we're gonna share with the audience today. Yeah, Dreamforce is one of my favorite events of the whole year. <laughs> and I mean, we got you at the right time then. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so, um, and Eric, I think uh, there's a lot more than the short intro that I gave uh, just now about you. So why don't you tell the audience about yourself? Sure, absolutely. So I have been in the Salesforce ecosystem since 2009. Um, like a lot of you, I, I didn't get started in my career knowing I wanted to work in Salesforce. It was one of those accidental situations um, although my first role in the ecosystem was not as an accidental admin, uh, I jokingly say I was an accidental analyst. Uh, I was working at a call center uh, as a as a call center agent, and they they decided they were going to implement Salesforce, and I was the one who was tapped to help them roll out Salesforce, the service cloud, to that contact center. Uh, so my function as a business analyst at that point. So I always tell people I'm the accidental analyst, uh, which is slightly different. Um, I've been at Dreamforce every year since 2011, uh, so I've only missed uh, one Dreamforce since I've been working in the ecosystem because I started late in 2009. Dreamforce that year had already happened. Um, as Gokul said, I've been a Salesforce MVP since 2013, and I founded Midwest Dreaming. That's been around actually since 2011. Um, it's been in Chicago since 2014 through this year, and actually for 2020, um, it's moving to Minneapolis, so uh, change of venue, change of city. Uh, hopefully, we'll still get a good crowd at Midwest Dreaming this, this coming year. Um, I lead a local uh, community group here in, in southern Indiana, the Evansville Indiana Administrators Group. We're, we're one of those small groups, but we meet pretty regularly. We I probably have 10 to 15 regular attendees, uh, but we're, we're meeting every couple of months talking about all sorts of things related to Salesforce. Um, Dreamforce, like I said, is kind of my favorite time of the year. Um, I organize a breakfast at Dreamforce uh, as a, a benefit for Project Night Night. They're, they are an organization that helps support uh, homeless kids to give them so, a sense of security and make them feel a little bit better about their own personal situation. Uh, you can see the link on there and hopefully maybe you can come join us this year. And uh, I have a little bit of a Twitter addiction. Um, there's three different Twitter handles you see on the screen right now that I tweet from. And there's a few others that I send tweets out from occasionally as well. So, um, you know, I guess admitting you have a problem is the first step to curing it. Um, but I really don't have any plans on curing my Twitter addiction. Yeah, I mean, Eric, uh, I mean, uh, love the intro and, you know, the Twitter addiction particularly, you know. How do you manage three accounts? <laughs> Some of them, you know, are only really active at certain times of the year, like Midwest Dream and obviously is, is highly active close to the event and during the event. And the, the bacon breakfast one, that's the Dreamforce newbie breakfast I just talked about. And that one also really only gets, gets tweeted pretty actively at a very specific time of the year. So it's not, it's not horrible. Um, I do use, use uh, Buffer as my tool of choice for, for scheduling tweets and, and things like that. So it's a little bit easier. 
Got it. Anyways, exciting stuff uh, with the Midwest stream in the new beauty reunion breakfast and the project night night. I think, yeah, all good. So, um, so before I move on forward, I think uh, I wanted to give you guys a quick intro of what fix as well. Right, so WhatFix is a digital adoption solution that helps enterprises across the world with adoption on the web applications. So let's say in the case of Salesforce, we help your end users be more productive on the platform and its hybrid mobile application that is Salesforce One. And uh, we do this by providing real-time interactive guidance within the Salesforce platform, helping users perform tasks quickly, effectively, and all the while enabling them to learn by doing. Right, and we'll be showing you uh, how you can do this at our Dreamforce booth, that is number 412 at the Expo. You can see the number 412. Uh, and uh, stay tuned till the end of the webinar to learn more about our Dreamforce giveaway campaign. It's called Dreamfix, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, you know, where you can win a lot of amazing prizes right up front. Okay, so awesome. And um, I'll just jump into the housekeeping rules. So during the webinar, all attendees will be muted by default. If you have any questions or uh, any, any questions at all, please submit it in the questions pane on the Go to Webinar panel on the screen, and uh, we'll address them in the Q and A session right after the web presentation. And you know, if you have any questions in between, just just shoot it out, and uh, we'll try and answer it as much as possible. And also, the webinar is being recorded. I think a lot of people wanted this recording, and uh, it'll be more relevant for the next month. So do share it with your colleagues and uh, friends who are coming to Dreamforce. Uh, we'll be sharing the recording with you by tomorrow. And if you have any further questions, uh, you can reach out to us directly at engage at whatfix.com or tweet out to us at, uh, at the rate whatfix. Okay, so let's begin. Time for the agenda. Uh, it's a bit longish, but believe me, it's full of intriguing stuff about Dreamforce. So I'll just quickly run through it uh, before we go on to each of these topics one by one. So all the way from 2003 to now, that's 16 years of Dreamforce. That's what we'll talk about to start with. And uh, you all know that every year Dreamforce has a central theme and uh, anything and everything revolves around it. So what's the theme this year? Any guesses? I mean, if you have ideas, put it down on the Q&A pane if you already know. Um, then where is everything? So this would be a sneak peek onto what to expect at the campground. Then uh, following that, we have the must not miss things at Dreamforce. And finally, Eric has some incredible survival tips for all Dreamforce attendees. Believe me, Dreamforce is not a conference that you just wing it. You have to be prepared for this four day long extravaganza. Right, am I right, Eric? Yeah, absolutely. Right, so let's, go on, let's get on with the first bit on the agenda. That's Dreamforce over the years. Uh, so, Here's an interesting fact. So, did you guys know prior to the birth of Dreamforce, uh, Salesforce had held many events around the country called city tours. And these usually lasted for a few hours and showcased the latest Salesforce features and roadmap, um, as well as allowed the customers and prospects to network and talk about how to get more out of the product. And this was before 2003. And in 2003, they launched the first Dreamforce ever. Uh, and instead of lasting for a few hours, it lasted a few days. And the first one in 2003 had about 1,000 registrants and 50 odd sessions at the event. And they used it to launch S-Force 2.0, which is the industry's first on-demand application service. And another interesting bit is the theme. Since 2003, every year has had a theme. And uh, in 2003, the first ever theme was imagination you can use. In fact, uh, Mark Benny of the founder and CEO of Salesforce in his first Dreamforce keynote was quoted as saying that uh, it is a goal of salesforce.com to spark imagination, creativity, and collaboration among the Salesforce user community. And over the years, Dreamforce has been the stage for many such launches of Salesforce, some incredible keynotes from, let's say, people like Michelle Obama, Satya Nadella, Melinda Gates, Al Gore, and many, many luminaries from business, entertainment, sports, and other areas and uh, then a lot of educational sessions for trailblazers and uh, then concerts from bands like Metallica, U2, Foo Fighters, etc. And then one of the biggest networking events in the world, right? With last year, it was 170,000 people registered for the, for the event. So, I mean, Eric, just curious, I mean, 170,000 people, is that true? <laughs> it's huge, that's for sure. There, there are times when you feel like you're a salmon 
trying to swim upstream with all the other salmon around you and then there's no room to move and uh, it definitely takes a little bit of effort and some planning to get around between sessions when the crowds are out in the streets. Yeah, I think uh, this webinar should help in that. <laughs> right, so then I, I just speak about the themes, right? So Dreamforce over the years. So um, previously there has been the fourth industrial revolution, giving back, equality and diversity, mindfulness, and a lot more different themes. And uh, you know, Eric, you've, you've been there since the last six years. So what's what's your take on Dreamforce and why is it so incredibly dreamy? Well, you know, for, for me, I, I think the biggest thing about Dreamforce is the opportunity to network with people. Um, it, it is truly the largest gathering of Salesforce users around the world. Um, and it, it seems like no matter how many thousands and thousands of people attend Dreamforce, you're always going to run into somebody who you know at some point in time. You're going to, you may run into somebody who you don't know, but you have a mutual connection with. Um, and then, of course, you may make a new connection who leads to solving one of your problems. Um, you might discover a new app that will help solve a problem or a challenge you have at work. And you might even meet someone who becomes your newest employer. Um, so it's uh, it's just a great opportunity to network and to learn. So then ultimately the value add is so different for anybody and everybody, right? So what do you think about that? Uh, what all the different value adds uh, that Dreamforce offers up to the attendees? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of things that, that everyone can take away from the event. I mean, the, the keynotes, of course, talk about Salesforce as a company and, and all the things that they do beyond just hosting the platform and providing this this amazing opportunity and this product that all of us use. But they also, of course, share uh, some of the good things that the company does out in the world for, for other people to help other businesses. Um, but beyond that, even um, some of the some of the other takeaways for attendees is, is the education, of course, uh, the breakout sessions, most of which are delivered by members of the community rather than by people who work at Salesforce. So it's, it's uh -huh. content built by people who survived challenges themselves and they're sharing the challenges they faced and how they solved them. Um, and that, that's a really big thing. I mean, that, that could solve a problem immediately for people right when they get back to work after Dreamforce. They may, they may sit back at their desk on Monday morning after Dreamforce and say, you know what? I saw so-and-so present this exact same problem and here's how they solved it. And then that person at their employer, employer can just sit down in their sandbox, program in everything they need to do, make all the, the adjustments, add the custom field, build the flows, whatever it is, and, and solve a problem and provide immediate ROI for their employer for their visit to Dreamforce. Yeah, no, it's it's really exciting time. So many different things that you can do at the conference, you know. And I think uh, you missed out on one big thing. Uh, let's say uh, Salesforce and newer updates, like uh, you know, every year they come out with something big about Lightning. And uh, you know, AI is really going to be huge this time with Einstein, Einstein Conference, and different uh, different associations with Einstein. And uh, the recent acquisition of uh, Tableau, so that's going to bring up a lot more individualization as well, right? Right, absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing what they present about Tableau and how that's going to improve visualization and reporting. Yep, exciting times. <laughs> right, so uh, let's move on to the 2019 Dreamforce, right? So this year, the theme is different from the others and it's, it's much more focused on the Salesforce central theme, which is unifying the customer. And uh, Salesforce has actually put the theme to be around Salesforce 360 offering a unified view of the customer across all the different business functions uh, of Salesforce. In fact, it reflects on the Expo Hall as well uh, at Dreamforce, with uh, uh, Salesforce 360 being right at the center and company booths from ID, sales, marketing, commerce, etc. being set up around it. Right. So what is the Salesforce 360? Simply said, you have it all on the screen, right? It's, it's a one-stop shop that comes with investing in Salesforce. And uh, what do you think, Eric? So why do you think Salesforce is pushing uh, 360, uh, the whole Salesforce 360, so aggressively? Well, you know, I, I think that really started a few years ago where, where they talked about getting a whole new view of your customer. Um, but more recently, with the, the uh, acquisition of MuleSoft last year, 
um, that kind of helped unify all the data and bring all the data into the platform and make it a lot more accessible. So I think mm -hmm. I think they're really kind of expanding on that and making making sure that that all the customers of Salesforce realize everything that's available to them. Uh, you mentioned Einstein just a few minutes ago. Um, AI and Einstein is is going to be a big deal this year as well. It's it's pretty much available across all the clouds now, where you can can get Einstein predictions and and things of that nature uh, to help guide your salespeople to sell faster, to, to optimize their pricing or, or whatever, whatever is needed around that. I mean, you're, you're even going to see Einstein um, in action while you're looking at your Dreamforce schedule and you're building your, your sessions once the agenda builder goes live. You know, it's, a, it's a big deal for sure. Yeah, I think um, it's incredible even, you know, um, I mean, unlike the previous years, uh, the 360 is actually since, be since it's being a central theme, uh, I think Dreamforce this year would be a, a lot more organized, right? Much more uh, easy to go through and the whole different uh, places uh, allocated for, for, you know, certain things like IT, sales, service, et cetera. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, I, I get the feeling they're going to try to organize the campus, uh, the overall campus of Dreamforce to be kind of similar to the graphic that you're showing right now where everything spreads out from the customer in the middle and each each area has its own specific building if you will on the campus mm -hmm. yeah actually so that that's what i was going to jump into next that's a campground right so uh incredible event a lot of things to do there there's the expo there's a campground there are specific areas allocated for admins developers uh, uh you know uh, sales people again networking areas lounges there's just too many things happening in the free post so as an mvp and with your experience uh, how do you make the maximum out of it are there some insider tips on that well you know i, I think the the biggest thing to to think about is what's important for you and your business um focus in on those specific areas first whether that means you're going to a specific session or a keynote or visiting a certain area within the campground, or even visiting with a few specific uh, partners in the, the cloud expo. Think about what's gonna impact your, yourself, your job and your company, and, and focus on those first. Perfect, I think, um, so I'll jump into the next bit, which is again, exciting, really. That are the things you must not miss at Dreamforce 2019. I mean, there's so many things that you don't want to miss there, but, uh, and yeah, unfortunately you do still, but as Eric also mentioned earlier, Dreamforce is definitely not a conference that you're weighing it just by showing up. It's in fact, it needs a lot more planning. For example, uh, if you haven't booked your hotels as yet, then guys, you're going to burn a hole in your pockets for sure. So get that done ASAP, right? Isn't that right, Eric? <laughs> yeah, if, if you don't have a hotel right now, chances are you're going to be staying in Oakland. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and it's going to be really far. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, and apart from being the hub for all things tech, innovation, and, uh, you know, Salesforce itself, Dreamforce has activities that are meticulously planned, and uh, that these meticulously planned activities maximize learning for everyone attending the event. I mean, this includes the 2700 plus sessions, the hands-on workshops, the circle of success, keynotes. Uh, they haven't announced the keynote speakers as yet, and I'm sure the lineup would be great this year as well. Then there's a Dreamfest concert. I think last year was Metallica, before that U2, and then Foo Fighters. So that's, again, going to be incredible. Uh, Eric, have you been to any of those? I, I have gone to a few of those. My first year at Dreamforce was uh, the first year Metallica played, and that concert was actually down in the basement of uh, Moscone where the keynotes are held now. Um, and it was packed. It was wall to wall people. Uh, there were people trying to get in through the fire exits. I mean, it was, it was kind of crazy, but it was really a really fun time, uh, especially with, the, with all the music and the people down there. Um, but yeah, if, if you're into, into music of any kind, really, I, it, it would be great to go see the concert regardless of who's playing simply for the experience. I mean, chances are it's the only time you may get to see that particular artist playing. Uh, so I'd take advantage of it if I were you. 
Yeah, just curious. I mean, in your MVP circuit, do you have any ideas on which band is coming this year? <laughs> I've heard lots of rumors, but they're all just rumors. Um, I, I wish I had a sneak peek that I could share with you, but I really don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'll just go into the deeper things, and let's say the must not miss continues, right? So, boot camps. So, uh, apart from, uh, you know, Sales was actually holding a three day boot camp from November 16 to 18 for attendees who have already registered for Dreamforce. And it's actually a great opportunity for you to get to interact with the trailhead, I mean, trailhead experts, uh, you know, the other peers over there, and explore everything possible within Salesforce. And most importantly, uh, a lot of it would be based on trailhead as well. So you can rank up. Also, you can get certified there. And uh, apparently, I think at the boot camp uh, for registration for certification is about 50% of the original price. Uh, that's what I've heard so far. So it's pretty, pretty much it's a steal. Um, Eric, uh, can you tell a little bit more about the boot camp and you know who should be attending this? Yeah, absolutely. And and you're absolutely right on the price for certification at Dreamforce. It is 50% off the, the their normal price. Okay. So if you're even contemplating getting a certification, uh, doing it at Dreamforce is a great opportunity. Um, but the, the boot camps, I think, are, are they have several different boot camps going on um, during the, the, the time period leading up to Dreamforce. Those so start, I think, on Saturday. It's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And um, they're, they're at varying levels. There's an administrator boot camp, there's a developer boot camp. Um, and if you're new to the ecosystem, um, that's a great opportunity to get some really strong hands-on training uh, and, and get immersed very quickly and learn a lot uh, really quickly. Uh, I believe the boot camps even come with a certification exam included uh, that you can, can take towards the end of the boot camp if you wanted to try it that quickly. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a really good opportunity, I think, for, for those that are new, but also those who are looking to gain some new skills. If you've been an admin for several years, for example, and you want to get your toes wet with, with becoming a developer, try the developer boot camp if you can and, and see how that feels for you. It'll give you a really good taste of as to what developing is like and, and hopefully get you the skills you need to gain your certification. Great, and uh, guys, this here is a quick reminder. So um, as you all know, Dreamforce registration is already closed. It's it's sold out already. I mean, I think two months uh, from Dreamforce, all the passes are gone. So uh, if you're not yet registered, or if your friends or family haven't, uh, or peers haven't registered, then there's a Dreamforce Expo Plus pass, which is live now. So search for the Salesforce, I mean, Dreamforce Expo pass and fill in the form, and you get a free pass for the last two days of Dreamforce. That's November 21, and uh, that is Thursday, and 22nd, the Friday. So um, there's one more bit. Throughout the four days, uh, there'll be a lot of parties and activities in San Francisco. Uh, and we have written several blog posts uh, on that and have compiled the Dreamforce parties list. Check it out. Uh, so even if you can't make it to everything, make sure you go and have some fun time at parties. Uh, so Eric, do you, do you make time for these parties generally? Yeah, I, I usually usually attend a couple of them. Um, it, it seems like I, I always am double booked during Dreamforce for most of the week. Um, I so I, I will I will stop by and visit with a few people at one one event and and move on to the next event uh, and and try to hit as many of them as I can just to visit with some people. But they're they're usually uh, tough to get into. Sometimes they're some of them are really crowded. Uh, if you're not a fan of loud noises and, and large crowds, uh, besides being at Dreamforce, the, these events may still not be for you. Um, but, you know, you, you still might run into someone who you wanted to ask a question to uh, when you saw them present at a session earlier and didn't get a chance to. So they're, they're a great networking opportunity, just like everything else at, the, at this event. So try to, try to get to at least one or two, I would say. Yeah, it's going to be hectic, but uh, worth it, I guess. Right. Right. So the next bit, community go and uh, tree of gratitude. So actually, that brings us. Uh, I mean, that brings back memories. You know, the, uh, the community go and uh, the tree of grat gratitude was launched. I think two years back. So this was almost the same time with when I interviewed Erica Cool, the Queen Bee of Salesforce community. And uh, 
uh, in the interview, she had actually mentioned about this new experiment uh, that they've been doing. And it's two years now, and it's, it's still a huge hit. And uh, Salesforce has been always a big believer in the power of communities. And the Trailblazer community groups, uh, these are great channels for learning, sharing new ideas, and growing a network, right? So, and Dreamforce the, itself dedicates its Trailblazer community course to give you a chance to get involved in these community conferences and then interact with these community leaders and uh, possibly even start a new community of your own. So, Eric, this is for you, definitely, as someone who organizes Trailblazer community groups himself. You are like the best person to talk about this, especially uh, since you have been a trailblazer, a community leader, and you've also created a community of your own, the Minimal Streaming, right? So what do you think about all of this? Community Cove, Tree of Gratitude, and the entire uh, community at Dreamforce? That's, that's the place where I'll spend a lot of my time during the week is in the Community Cove. Um, chances are you'll find me standing behind one of the tables as a volunteer for a while because uh, I, I, I tend to tend to want to help others learn about the community and where they can get involved. Um, you know, there's there's hundreds of local community groups across the world um, that meet on a regular basis in person. There there are also groups across the, the globe that meet virtually, uh, like for financial services, as an example, there's a virtual community group on financial services that I believe meets once a month. I think that group is a hybrid group where they actually have an in-person meetup in New York City, but they broadcast it worldwide so others across the world that are in financial services can partici participate as well. So it, it's, a, it's a really great place, the, the Community Cove at Dreamforce. It's a great place to learn all about the various types of groups that are out there, where they meet, how they meet, um, how you can get in contact with the organizer of those events and, and get connected. Um, and, you know, that's, I keep, keep going back to the people aspect of Dreamforce, but that's the whole people aspect and this whole community uh, is, in my opinion, the greatest strength of Salesforce at, at, as a whole is the, the the willingness of all of its people, all of its customers to simply talk to other people and share their successes and help everyone get through their own challenges. Um, it's, not, it's not like any other software uh, event or platform in the entire world. Absolutely. I mean, you got to love the Salesforce community. And I think uh, it's it's about 4 million people right now and still growing, right? Yeah, it's it's huge. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the next thing that I have, which, again, you should be excited about, is the resume bar and the career fair. So uh, it's, it's, it's a jam-packed career fair where you get a chance to land your dream jobs, right? There's so many companies coming to Dreamforce and... Uh, in fact, I, I love how it is set up. And then it's called Resume Bar. Eric, you know what the whole idea about Resume Bar is, right? Right, and, and it really has nothing to do with drinking. Uh, there's enough of that that goes on at Dreamforce late in the evening. This, this one yeah. is really more about, about talking to experts on how you can better present yourself in, on your resume, on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, it helps, it's designed to help get you better connected to opportunities that you may be suited for. So it, it's career advice. It's things like, let's look at your resume and see how you've got things worded. Um, if you've got a bunch of certifications that you're holding and you don't have them on your resume or on your LinkedIn profile, that's something they'll point out to you that you really should, should include. Uh, those are definitely big things that employers are looking for these days is, is those certifications. Um, for some people, a certification is a foot in the door for their first job at, in the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, for others, um, simply sharing your trailhead badges is another way to to show some of the experience and knowledge that you share, that you hold. So. Got it. And I think uh, I'm a bit curious about the bartenders there, right? Who are these people? <laughs> well, it, it, I believe they have uh, some individuals who work at Salesforce that are, are tending the bar, as you called it, but I think it's also probably staffed by some Salesforce MVPs and, and other notables from the community, um, too, who are certainly have been longtime members of the community and, and have progressed their careers and, and can share their, their secrets, if you will, on, on how to get the job that you really want. Got it. 
I think I mean it's it's really incredible for you know Salesforce to set up something like this and uh, will be really useful for the entire community. Right. So I'll move into the next bit, which is the digital experience at uh, Dreamforce and. Uh, I think no discussion about Dreamforce is complete without the mention of the legendary Dreamforce keynotes. I mean, there's the main keynote, then there's a trailhead keynote. Uh, there's so many things going on. And uh, also they have had remarkable people like Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, Melinda Gates, Satya Nadella, and, uh, and a lot of awesome people uh, for these main keynotes. I think uh, Mark Benioff just doesn't announce it till a few minutes before the keynotes. And that's actually exciting as, as well. So, um, and this year, uh, from what we know so far, it's the first ever time Dreamforce where uh, the keynote will be centered on digital experience. So bringing to work together the entire Salesforce 360 and all of the experience related to uh, tech. And in fact, the assumption is that the keynote will project the way Salesforce is looking at the customers and building amazing digital experiences. And there will be over 30 sessions and dozens of hands-on experience aligned around the same concept and how you can create digital experience with really high ROI, that's written on investment, and ROX, that is written on experience. So Eric, what, what, what do you think about this whole concept of return on experience, and how does it actually factor into the tech today and in the future, especially in the Salesforce ecosystem? So you, you, if you think about how sales generally take place, I mean, old school sales, it was, meeting somebody face to face, they'd hand you a bunch of papers and they'd talk to you about a bunch of stuff. And then there'd be a phone call or a few meetings to follow up over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I mean, that, that, those days are gone. Uh, today, the buyer is out there on the internet doing their research. They're, they're looking for all the product knowledge they can find. And they track all that stuff down before they even talk to a salesperson. They're, they're almost convinced they want to buy something uh, before they talk to a salesperson. So, from the buyer's perspective, what they want from their salesperson is the experience. They, they want the seller to, to engage the buyer in a meaningful conversation, in a great experience. And, and in reality, what the buyer is buying is not necessarily the product based solely on price, but they're buying this product or this service based upon the experience that they got and the feeling they had while they were engaging with the salesperson. Um, and that's that's what return on experience really is all about. It's it's if you're a seller, you got to look at it from your the perspective of your buyers. Uh, be curious, think about what the buyers are doing and how they how they want to buy. I mean, no, not that many people go to a, a store anymore and and browse the shelves and and sit there for hours and hours looking at things. Um, not even car buying is that way today anymore. You, you can buy a car totally on the internet and have it delivered to your house without even test driving the vehicle. Which to, to me, that's just wild um, that you can do that much and, and make that kind of a transaction online. Um, I mean, but that's, that's all, that's what this digital experience is all about. It, it's creating these, these platforms and these experiences for the buyers to be able to, to do all their homework and to research everything that they need to know uh, so that they make a really good informed decision. And, Technology is what drives all that, and Salesforce is the technology really behind all of that. Yeah, I think, and uh, you know, um, according to the recent, I mean, buzzword trends, right? You know, return on experience is the new ROI. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So moving on. Oh yeah, there's an interesting slide here. So Dreamforce is all about making an impact uh, with you know, the technologies that they acquire, they partner with, and they try to find new ways to solve these problems by, and, uh, you know, and tackle the business challenges uh, through these, uh, uh, you know, affiliations. And we've already talked about the digital experience keynote. Amongst all of that, I think the biggest for now is the Salesforce and Google's partnership at Dreamforce. And that's something that's really big now. And a lot of activities are also planned around this. Uh, so from what we know so far, there'll be a dedicated marketing cloud and Google Analytics 360 session. Then Google will power the agenda builder with personalization, digital experience, and a bit of analytics. Then there is an analytics station which will be set up for one-on-one -on -one product demonstrations or consultations. And uh, the Trailblazer uh, can also go there and there'll be a help desk at the same place 
where the keynotes, which you know, if you're not able to attend a particular keynote, including uh, the key main keynote of Mark Benioff, it will be live streamed at the analytics station, right? So we've been hearing from all sort of places, all these information, we've been just compiling it together so that uh, we can uh, give it to you guys in this uh, session. And uh, yeah, Eric, uh, what else uh, should I add over here? Is there anything else that they should expect um, at the front for, let's say, Google or Salesforce partnership or any other incredible things that you're excited to know about? So you think about think about Google and Salesforce for just a second and go back further in time. Think before Trailhead existed, how is it that most of us got our knowledge about Salesforce? We went to Google and we typed in a search. How do you do X, Y, Z in Salesforce? And Google would return a ton of options for us. Some of them pointed directly to the help, de the help files within Salesforce. Others pointed to a post within the Salesforce community. Um, I mean, Google and Salesforce have been sharing knowledge, if you will, for, for years. Um, and, and I think this partnership that's now being formalized uh, is only going to make that stuff stronger. It's going to provide a lot more benefit to to the end users, to the customers of Salesforce, for sure, with their, their enhanced search capabilities and all that. Um, but, you know, with, with the partnership between the two companies, the, the companies are going to gain some benefit from the knowledge, uh, the knowledge sharing and the data that's available to them. And it, it all goes right back around to where we started, where we were talking about the, the customer 360 and, and getting a full view of what's, what's happening. Um, it, it's pretty fascinating. And, I mean, if you think about your daily life, you're, you're searching for, th for something on Google, uh, and then you log into Facebook, and what's the next thing you see? You see an ad in Facebook for items very similar to what you just searched for on Google. Uh, for some people, that's a little spooky um, that that happens. Um, and for others, it's like, oh, hey, that's suggestive selling. I mean, that's, that's the way the seller should happen. I mean, should act. Uh, it, it's, you just looked at this. How about looking at these as well? I mean, it, it's, it's artificial intelligence. It, it's the future. For, for a short way to put it. Um, so. Perfect, Eric. I think uh, that sums it up pretty much. And uh, to everyone who is uh, watching the webinar, you know, uh, what are your uh, top things that you're really curious about uh, for Dreamforce? Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of questions coming in the Q&A section and uh, uh, if there are something that you're really excited about and uh, want us to share it to all the attendees of the webinar, we'd be happy to do that. Right, so I'll move into another interesting bit that is a survival kit for Dreamforce 2019. And Eric, um, this is something uh, which you've been doing for a couple of years now, and uh, you've been the pulse of Dreamforce as well for multiple years now. And so what was the story behind the survival kit that you've been, uh, you've been writing the blogs on that? It has been a couple of years, I think two, three years, am I right? Yeah, yeah, I think I've been putting this out. It might actually be more like four or five years now when I've, where I've published the survival kit. Um, uh -huh. And it's really, it's tips primarily geared for the first timers, the people that have never attended Dreamforce before, because it really is a conference unlike any other. Um, it, it's a four day event. There's a lot going on. The campus is, is widely spread out through the entire city of San Francisco. Um, and so you got to keep a few things in mind to, to stay on top of your game and be able to enjoy the event and learn from it. Um, and the, the first thing everybody always points out that's been to Dreamforce more than once is comfortable shoes. You're going to do a ton of walking, uh, regardless of what you're doing at Dreamforce, you're going to walk. Um, I mean, I, I tracked my mileage uh, with a Fitbit uh, the years that I've been going to Dreamforce. And even the very first year that I attended, I was walking about five miles a day. Um, and it, it's gone as high as six or seven miles a day on an average over the years. So, so comfortable shoes uh, is, is a must. And I would actually say probably more than one pair, um, just so you're not wearing out the same pair of shoes so often. Um, but if you haven't already bought your new shoes for Dreamforce, uh, you better do that quick because you don't want to wear them for the first time when you go to Dreamforce. Uh, buy them within the next week or so and wear them once a week or once a day for a couple hours just to get used to them and to break the shoes in a little bit so they're not brand new when you first step foot on the Dreamforce campus. But the second tip that I would suggest is comfortable clothing. Uh, sure, it's a business conference and you're going to see people there in, in suits and ties, but you're also going to see people there in jeans and a t-shirt. Um, and really, Salesforce 
they they tell you it's business casual if you read through their FAQ from a from a clothing and dress code perspective. But I've never seen them turn anybody away who's been there um, for for wearing something. So, um, as long as you have clothes on, I mean, obviously it, that's that's a good thing. Uh, but wear something that's that's going to be comfortable for you. Keep in mind you're going to be going in and out of buildings, in, and in San Francisco in November, it's going to be a little bit on the cool side, especially once the sun goes down. It'll get cold pretty quickly. Uh, if you're not used to that type of weather, uh, you might want a, a jacket or a sweater or even a couple of layers that you could throw on in the evening to help keep you warmer. Uh, and during the day, sometimes the, the the rooms that the breakout sessions and keynotes are in can even get cold. Uh, because they they pump it so full of cold air because they know all the bodies inside it are going to warm it up. So so again, the layered clothing gives you the option to to kind of regulate your own climate a little bit. Um, one of the things that I discovered early on in my Dreamforce career is um, I get lost in conversations with people pretty easily, and the next thing I know, it's two o'clock in the afternoon and I didn't have any lunch. Um, that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, you need energy. You need food to to have the energy to last the whole day. So if if you feel like you're going to be too busy where you won't have time to sit down for a real lunch, uh, look for the stations where Dreamforce provides lunches. Grab a box from there and take it with you to your next session. Or even just pack some protein bars or granola bars or things like that in your backpack so you have something that you can snack on at any point in time. And then on the same token, don't forget to be drinking. And, and in this case, we want it's it's really water. Uh, staying hydrated by drinking a lot of water is a great thing that helps your brain stay sharp and keeps you focused. Uh, there's plenty of restrooms all around the Greenforce campus. Because if you know if you drink a lot of water, you're going to need a restroom sooner or later too. Um, but but that's definitely a, a another thing to keep in mind. Um, that's one thing I discovered pretty easily, pretty quickly too. Is uh, when you talk to a lot of people and you're you're constantly on the move, uh, your throat and your mouth gets pretty dry pretty fast. Fortunately, Dreamforce has provided a water bottle as part of their pack every year, and there's refilling stations all over the place, so you can keep your water bottle water water bottle full uh, pretty easily. So uh, keep that in mind. And you know, here's the next tip I've got on the screen. There is talking to people. I, I, I seem to mention that all the time. You got to talk to people. I, I remember one session I gave talking about Dreamforce where I said um, something along the lines of when you're standing in the line for a keynote and you're, you're just waiting to get into the room, talk to the people next to you. And I, I said, say hi. Say hi. My name's Eric. I'm from Indiana. What do you, what's your name? What do you do? Where are you from? And somebody in the audience at one of those sessions once said, so it's okay for me to tell everybody I'm you. I, they, they said, I can say, hi, I'm Eric. It's like, well, not exactly, unless that's really your name. Um, but, you know, talking to people sometimes can be hard. Uh, some people are, are a little scared, a little shy, uh, but it's, it's really pretty simple at Dreamforce. Just a, a quick hello, what are you doing? Is this your first Dreamforce? Um, and the next thing you know it, you'll be walking into the session still in conversation with this person. You're going to learn a lot about them, what their challenges are, what successes they're doing. You might actually discover they're using Salesforce in a very similar manner that you are at your company, and you can help each other out with some potential solutions. Um, from a breakout session perspective, um, the ones that tend to fill up very quickly are the hands-on training sessions. So if you're interested in those, uh, as soon as the agenda builder, builder comes out, keep an eye out for those sessions and get them booked onto your agenda as quickly as you can, um, because they do go quickly. Um, other sessions uh, to keep an eye out for, I would focus on things like the roadmap sessions. That's the, the sessions where Salesforce talks all about all the forward-looking statements, um, about all the stuff that's going to happen in the product sooner or later. Uh, and those are the ones they do not record uh, because they're all under safe harbor uh, and, the, and they may or may not really happen, um, depending on how the product goes and how development goes. Um, and my last tip there, leave your laptop at home. And I know that, that's somewhat unrealistic for a lot of people because even though you're at a conference, you still have work to do. Um, so you, I might almost modify that to be leave it at the hotel um, in your room, locked up in your safe, because you may not need it during the day while you're busy in sessions the whole time. Um, you can take notes on your phone. You can use apps like Evernote, for example, on your phone to take notes, store them in the cloud, of course. You can 
go old school and use pen and paper if you want to to take notes. Um, and even even the lightest laptops tend to get heavy when they're in a backpack on your back all day long. So I I would suggest not bringing it unless you absolutely need to. Okay, that actually is just the best survival kit <laughs> probably. I think I've listed down most of it. Guys, if you haven't listed this down, yes, I'll send the recording right after the webinar and uh, yeah, you can make sure that this is shared with uh, your friends and colleagues as well. Okay, Eric. So nothing you've missed out of me over here, right? All right. I think we covered that pretty well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wanted to move on to another exciting bit. So that's your secret sauce to enjoy Dreamforce 2019. I mean, we've been talking about a lot of work and you know how to go around, what to do there. But uh, you know, uh, wanted to ask about how what you do there. I mean, how do you enjoy Dreamforce? You've been there for so many years and uh, uh, a lot of people to talk to, a lot of keynotes, all these things. But what's your secret sauce? Yeah, so you know, you, you've heard me say this a few times already. For me, it's it's a lot about the people. Um, I really get a lot out of meeting people uh, in person. I, I have a large Twitter following, uh, and and try to hook up with as many of those people as I can at Dreamforce to meet them in person. Um, one thing I've actually started doing over the last three or four years is on my Twitter account, I've created a list people I want to meet at Dreamforce 19. And as I have these interactions online with these individuals, I'll tag them into that list as a reminder to myself that, that I want to find this person at Dreamforce. Um, besides meeting people and talking to people, uh, one a couple other things to keep in mind, the keynotes, you don't necessarily have to go in the room where the keynote's happening to be able to see the keynote. A lot of them are live streamed, uh, like you mentioned earlier, uh, in, in several of the areas, you could probably catch a live stream of the keynote. But one of the things that I even did one year was I found a quiet spot to sit where I could get a little bit of work done while the keynote was going on. And I had the keynote live streamed on my phone. Uh, so I had the keynote going on in my ear with, the, with my earbuds off on my phone while I was doing a little bit of work. So don't feel like you have to get into the room where the keynotes are going on to be able to enjoy it. Uh, the breakout sessions, we we talked about that already. The hands-on training or the HOT, as I called it on there, and the roadmaps. Those are the two that generally don't get recorded. Uh, all, most of the other breakout sessions tend to be recorded and posted up onto the Dreamforce site and on YouTube shortly after the event. So for me, um, I've, I've always favored finishing a conversation with somebody rather than cutting it off short and saying, I got to go to a session. Um, so if you realize the session you're about to miss because you're in a great conversation is a not a high hands-on training or not a roadmap session, 99 times out of 100, it's going to be recorded. So you won't really miss it. You'll just then need to set aside some time when you get back into your office to go find the recording and watch it. Um, so that's about planning, which takes you into the expo hall. Um, the expo hall can be an interesting place. Um, it's certainly it's where all the partners are. It's where you can talk to them about their solutions. Um, some of them will have pretty cool swag that you can grab while you're in there. Others may like what fix may have a contest going on uh, where you can win some really cool things. Um, but it's really an opportunity to learn about everything out there in the ecosystem that all the partners have built. All the solutions they have to offer that may solve a problem that you have. From, from my point of view, I usually go into the expo hall with a certain plan in mind, uh, a few specific partners that I want to go talk to. And before I even walk through the doors on the hall, I find them on the map so I know where they are. So I'm not just wandering aimlessly through the sea of, of partners. Um, so I know exactly which row and aisle I want to go down to go visit with them. Um, and that's, that gives you that opportunity. Once you get in front of the partners that you want to, to visit with, let them show you a demo, let them talk to you. That's what they're there for. They want to share all their information about their products and then ask them all the questions you have. They're more than happy to answer all the questions you've got. What can you, how can I get a demo? How can I get a trial of, their, of this product? Can it solve X, Y, Z, those types of whatever questions you have. Uh, talk to the people at the booths for these, ex, these exhibitors. They're, that's what they're there for. They want to help you learn about their products and figure out more things that, that you can do with Salesforce. 
Um, there's a lot going on at Salesforce. We've, we've already hit that nail on the head several times. Uh, keep in mind, it's, it's more of a marathon than a sprint. You don't want to just race through and get done. You need to, to take your time about it and, and go methodical and, and plan out what you're doing and be very cautious and kind of, kind of careful about how you go about your day. Um, even just thinking about planning your breakout sessions when you're, you're building your agenda once the agenda builder is available. Keep in mind that all the sessions are not in Moscone. They're spread out across the city over three or four different hotels and both of the Moscone buildings. So when you're looking at the sessions you want to attend, if you have one that's at, that ends at 1050 and another one that starts at 11, if it's not close by, chances are you're not going to make it. You're going to need more than 10 to 15 minutes to walk from Moscone up to Union Square, for example. Um, if it wasn't Dreamforce time, there'd be plenty of time. But with the extra traffic and bodies in the city because of Dreamforce, things move a little slower. So just kind of keep distance in mind while you're planning out your schedule. Um, anybody who's been in the ecosystem for a while hears Salesforce talking about giving back all the time. There'll be some opportunities on the Dreamforce campus to give back, to do some, some good things for some charitable organizations. Um, I myself have organized a breakfast that I call the Newbie Breakfast at Dreamforce. I've been doing that since 2012, and I've always made it a fundraising effort for my favorite charity, Project Night Night. Uh, the breakfast this year is Tuesday morning, the first day of Dreamforce, November 19th. And yes, it starts early at 6.30 a.m. till 8.30, but you know the keynote starts at 9.30 that morning, so we want to get this over with. Uh, and give everyone an opportunity to get to the keynote or get to wherever else they need to go. Um, but it, if you're interested in joining the breakfast, it's a great opportunity, like I said earlier, to to meet people, to to make some new friends. Uh, and and what's surprising to me has always been how often you run into those people throughout the rest of the week. Even even in the crowd of 100,000 people, you're going to spot six to ten people that you ran into that you had breakfast with that first day. Um, of course, throughout this whole thing, you remember it, it's a learning experience. That's great. But relax. Try to have a little fun. You're there not just for the learning experience. I think the whole the whole thing is an experience. Everything that happens around Dreamforce is part of the experience. So, so try to enjoy it as well. And then, uh, you know, Dreamforce, it happens once a year. But with all the community-led events like Midwest Dreaming, uh, all the community groups that happen all that meet all year round across the whole world. I think that's the easiest way to keep Dreamforce kind of alive all year long is to participate in some of those other events. Awesome. So that's Eric Freshfield's secret sauce to enjoy Dreamforce 2019. I think Eric, <laughs> <laughs> right, it's definitely a marathon and not a sprint. I think, uh, yeah, everyone needs to. Um, go slow, enjoy Dreamforce one bit, you know, bit by bit. And yeah, newbie breakfast, project night night, and Midwest streaming. Don't forget about that. Right. So um, before I wrap up this webinar, here's a little a bit of things from our side as well. So we have, uh, we at Whatfix, you know, we have something which is Dreamforce special for you guys. It's a special giveaway contest called the Dreamfix Giveaways. And by registering for this uh, contest, you can stand a chance to win some awesome Warpix swags. And we have daily raffles, which includes AirPods, GoPros, Apple Watches, and you know even some more stuff which we, we are yet to announce. Uh, just drop by the booth, that's booth 4, 412 at the Dreamboost Expo, and uh, make sure you say that, okay, fine, I came in through the webinar, <laughs> right? And we'll, we'll make sure that you guys get some really cool swags from Warpix and also a chance to win these things, right? And we'd also love to talk about accelerating Salesforce adoption and uh, hacking Salesforce productivity. We are doing really well with that. And, you know, you have some incredible stories there, which our team will be uh, happy to tell you. So yes, that's booth number 412. And uh, a quick note before we wrap this thing, uh, there are a few questions that have come in, uh, Eric, uh, with the interest of time, I'll keep it really short. Uh, so almost everyone is asking this question, when does the agenda builder generally become available? Typically, agenda builder comes out about three weeks before the event, three to four weeks before the event actually starts. Um, so I would start watching for it probably within the next week or two. Um, 
keep an eye out for announcements on the Trailblazer community around that. Most likely that'll be in the, the all Dreamforce group. Uh, keep an eye out on the, the Salesforce and Dreamforce Twitter handle as well, because I'm sure they'll publicize it there once it's live. Okay, so uh, I have a question from M.E. Davis. So we have lots of information available through Trailhead, webinars, YouTube videos. How do we identify content that is unique at Dreamforce? And uh, how do we set up ourselves uh, for the, the maximum impact of understanding Salesforce? So I, I think that I think the biggest differentiator that Dreamforce has to offer over the other con the other types of content that you mentioned is the fact that the majority of the sessions promoted or presented at Dreamforce are presented by people who are Salesforce customers and users. It, it's those individuals sharing their knowledge and the things that they they gained the knowledge they gained by solving a challenge that they had at their own job. Um, so they'll, they'll share the pain that they went through. They'll share their, their process that they went through to how to find a solution, how to build a solution, how to source a solution from an app exchange partner, for example, um, and, and show you step-by-step -step almost what they did and, and how they solved their own problems. Um, and those, those individuals who are up on stage during the breakout sessions are, are, are always going to be happy to talk more one-on-one -on -one with people after the sessions too. Um, every, every presenter that I've ever known has been more than happy to, to follow somebody down the hallway, walk to a quiet spot uh, or whatever, have a, have a longer conversation over what they did. So um, Got it. that's a so big differentiator. Eric, so I, I think it's time I wrap this up. I mean, we have a few more seconds remaining for an hour, and it's been awesome, really. And thanks, guys, for joining in. Any other questions, we'll be reaching out to you. Uh, you know, we'll write to you right after the webinar. And um, Eric, it's been super fun. Thanks a lot for joining in. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, so if you guys have any feedback on the webinar, do reach out to us uh, at, at the rate WhatFix on Twitter or Google at WhatFix, and you can catch Eric again at, at the rate Eric Fresh on Twitter and Eric.Freshfield at Gmail. So see you guys at Dreamforce. Thanks a lot and uh, cheers. Have a great day. Take care, everyone.